Hello class. So in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a site plan or a site model in SketchUp. This is one that I downloaded right through SketchUp and I showed how to do that in a previous video but uh, this is my site and I want I did a design I need to put my design on this site on this farmland here in the center it is where I want to design. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly big site um, so modeling the entire site just doesn't make sense. It'll take a lot of time and you'll barely see any of that detail in any any of the renderings. And then so uh, the question is, what do you do? And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm actually going to take a rendering, which I already have, which I'll show you here. We're going to take this rendering, which is the same site, and we're going to apply this rendering on top of the model in SketchUp for all the site stuff. Of course, then you need to build your model on top. Um, and that'll give you just enough detail to make it look sort of realistic. So what I mean by that is here, here's an example of a project I really did here, a slide. So all these buildings I model in SketchUp, we can see here this terrain that's exactly pulled in through SketchUp through, through the way I showed you before. The site here was rendered in Illustrator just like uh, on the other one and I took this rendering, applied it to the three-dimensional model and then built my buildings on top of that and added my trees on top of that. And we can see the fact that there's a curb cut and you know other things in here it just at this scale you just don't see that and so why bottle bother taking the time to model it because state trains are usually pretty complex geometry it can be really difficult to model all of those things um, so here's a quick and easy way to do it you can, if you got to do a site plan rendering anyway just reuse it for your model and then it ties the whole presentation together because it's literally the same same rendering. So uh, that's an introduction. Let, let me get into this. And actually, I'm going to do two videos. There'll be a follow-up video with more detail. Then I'm going to, I'll, I'll mention the reason why at the end of this video, but it is sort of two parts in here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to do a little bit of prep work for my uh, site plan. Um, and by that I mean I only want the ground plane stuff. So if my illustration has shadows of buildings and trees, all those sorts of things I need to um, turn off because I just want grass, fields, in this case roads, crosswalks, so on and so forth. Uh, the rest of it would be modeled uh, later on. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second and turn those layers off. Boom, I'm back. So we can see I turned off those layers. I don't care whether it's rendered in here or not. Uh, my building would be modeled on top of that. So this sort of flat, unrendered area will, will have a space in between. Again, shadows I turned off because I can adjust the shadows and sketch up as I need to, to to meet whatever I did. So this is just ground plane stuff. So the next thing I'll have to do is I'll, I'll get have to get a JPEG uh, of this image and there's a couple of things you can do uh, a lot of times I like to print a PDF as a record and maybe save it as a JPEG from Photoshop or you can just go just for simplicity's sake here I might just export and export as um, web legacy here uh, I'm gonna do that because it'll sort of maintain the study box not get not get the stuff that's outside of it uh, and I can adjust quality here which is an issue that I'll get into in the next video. So I'll just hit save. And I'm just going to throw this on my desktop for now. All right. Um, and then so the next step, once I have that saved, I'm going to go back to my SketchUp model and I'm going to, uh, I can stay on layer zero. It's fine. I'm just going to go to file import and I'm going to go to JPEG. I'm going to go to my desktop where I have this site plan saved. I'm going to import it. Now, the trickiest part is this next step. What I have to do is I have to get this image, and I have to get it set exactly to scale right on top of this. Now, because this was drawn at a scale, um, it's not to full scale like it needs to be in SketchUp. So um, I have to sort of guesstimate. Again, we're dealing with a large drawing, so you don't have to be precise down to the inch. But what I need to do is I need to get this directly above. doesn't matter how high above, but I have to get above this surface into the right scale and into the in the right location perfectly vertical. It's going to take me some time to do this. What I'm going to do is I'll draw some lines up from some elements here like buildings that I see in both of them and road intersections and stuff and just use the scale command and move command in SketchUp to get this image. It's going to take me a few minutes so I'm going to pause again and uh, I'll come back and show you that. All right, I'm back. So I actually had scaled it pretty pretty closely here but you can see what I did is I just took a line up from the corner of this building and I line up from this intersection over here from my 3D model. 
uh, that was full scale. And then I ended up just aligning the same corner of the building with my image here. And then I scaled it to, to, a, to a point where then the intersection sort of got to the same size. So now I've got this scaled and located in the exact right spot above this. And so I can delete these lines. You can get it scaled and moved however you sort of want to um, do that. And what I'm going to do is um, just for safekeeping, I'm going to draw a line around this thing. It's going to be important in my next video. I don't need that surface. I just need to mark out the corners. Oops. Got to get not. I just want the face here. I can cheat because I really only need to corner so I can get rid of one of those lines there. All right. So, so I've got the image. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select on my image and I'm going to right click and say explode. And essentially it was an image. Now it's a surface with my image painted on top of it. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my paint bucket tool. I'm going to hit ALT and I've just absorbed my image as a material. We can see, see the change over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to double click onto my site model and I'm going to paint bucket this right onto here. And we can see it drapes right on to my model, three dimensional and all. Right now, what we see here because my rendering was actually smaller, which is good, than than what I originally imported into SketchUp. Um, we see it repeated at the edges. I can take care of that. Obviously, if I decided that this was what my rendering needs to be, that's what my rendering needs to be. My SketchUp model doesn't necessarily need to be bigger. So what I'm going to do now, oh, it's auto saving. I'm going to pause it. Okay, my autosave is done here. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drape this line down onto my model and then get rid of the areas that I don't need for my model so my SketchUp model exactly matches my rendering. You don't have to do that. Uh, it's sort of an extra step. Before I do that, though, what I do want to point out is you'll notice that SketchUp can only take in so much uh, detail in a uh, rendering. And oftentimes if you take a whole site, especially a big site, you see when you zoom in it gets a little fuzzy. There is a way of dealing with that. It's a little bit more complex. It's actually going to require me to do the steps I just did over and over again. There's a way using Photoshop that you can sort of uh, make that easier to do, which I'll show in the follow-up video. But having, I usually always start with the simple case because I can set up this rectangle. I get my first model down. I can adjust the site terrain as needed. So let me show you that sort of last bit of step here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Um, what I'll do is I'm just going to copy the, a surface and all of its lines just for a second. I control C because I'm on a PC and I got, cause I got to go into this group here and I need to make sure they're in the same group. I'm just going to paste it right on top of itself, right, right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my sandbox tools, which I don't currently have up. So I'm going to go to tools here, uh, sandbox, or I could right click and I want to go to drape. And I already had that selected, so now I want to say I want to drape this, I really just want to drape that square on top of this. We can see it's created that line on there, and what it, what it has done is it allows me to separate this terrain that was outside my rendering study area and delete it. And what I'm left with is um, my design on this new site onto which I can model the rest of my buildings, and it's got all the topography. Even if I had topography in my study area, which I purposely for this drawing picked a flat site because there's fields and things. Um, it would drape onto the terrain and the road would go up the hill if I happen to have one going up the hill. There's a little slope here. Uh, I, I guess the road I drew didn't quite get to the slope, but had this road continued up, it would start sloping up that terrain just, uh, just like that and so on and so forth. So um, if you're done with this, you can delete it. I'm going to keep it to get for my next step, but uh, it's a really quick and simple way to get a lot of detail down onto the site and really only take minutes to do. So good luck with that and I'll see you in the next video for how to get a higher quality paste onto this.